Welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. Cook Inlet Tug and Barge is a marine transportation company specializing in harbor services with a primary marketing focus on the Port of Anchorage, providing their customers with quality-based service specifically tailored to their needs. The National Weather Service. Hello everyone, thanks for joining us for Saturday's show. There's a flood advisory out uh, for the Kuskokoom River between or from Nikolai to McGrath there. That's out until noon tomorrow. That due to the two to four inches of rain that fell uh, mostly upstream over the last couple of days in that late Tuesday through uh, yesterday period. Uh, and so there's been some flooding that occurred today, water getting over the bank in Nikolai and causing some uh, Minor flooding in that area is expected to continue uh, since the water levels were still rising early this afternoon. Expected to continue uh, until noon tomorrow. And looking at yesterday's satellite imagery, here's uh, the cloud mass that was responsible for all the rain from the middle part to the well into yesterday here. But already in the afternoon, signs of it uh, slipping on up to the uh, north slope there with a the heavier precipitation uh, and lessening amounts here over southern Alaska. Nice conditions out to the west, uh, to the southwest and then some more rain moving into the panhandle. Now we'll see uh, today a uh, couple of things on there. This next system here coming across the Bering Sea and uh, one more loop to go there is uh, already pushed some rain into the Pribilof Islands and about to show up along the coast. Uh, if it hasn't already, it will over the next, uh, or by early this evening. And moving along to the uh, next frame, I thought we had today's loop in there anyway. A lot more clear skies here over southern Alaska. Most of this moisture now all up uh, with the main upper low over the western north slope there is mainly along the Brooks Range area, but some thunderstorms were breaking out in areas there, clump southwest of uh, the uh, central Tanana Valley, pushing up to the northeast. You can see right in this area, thunderstorms developed uh, kind of a group of them. They're sliding off to the northeast there, so may show up in the central Tanana Valley here in the next uh, hour or two, and showers popping up elsewhere, pretty scattered and a lot less than there were over the last couple of days. More extensive area up here over the northwest Arctic coastal areas and some thunderstorms there just east of the border, and showers all along the Alaska or the Brooks Range with this uh, low cloud fog and some light rain and drizzle along the coast. Main rain band with this back out to the west yet and uh, has moved into the Pribilofs. Otherwise, it's a lot of low clouds, areas of fog right up to the uh, Alaska Peninsula, on down toward Cold Bay. A few breaks around in Alaska today, and then uh, some gusty west winds, 15 to 25 miles an hour for the Aleutians there with some clouds and a little bit of fog out toward Shimia. Otherwise, uh, the front uh, broke up as it came northward here across the uh, panhandle today. Brought some rain in areas there kind of uh, turning more showery this afternoon. Some breaks over Dixon Entrance shifting up into the area. Another front down here to the south will probably roll up uh, and keep it occasionally wet there tonight. So look for another or an increase in the occasional rain and showers as that pushes in. Still pretty good up to the north, just some uh, variable cloudiness. And evening showers, actually some already developed and are going on over the Chugach Mountains. Uh, could be an isolated thunderstorm or two in the taller clouds that develop this evening. Uh, say from the Chugach up to the Talkeetnas or the uh, Wrangell Mountains, even the Alaska Range, but most of those will fall silently to the evening. Lots of clear skies uh, tonight for the eastern interior areas there. And uh, showers back to the west and then all the rain coming in with this system, the low center passing just south of St. Lawrence Island. And the front uh, around 3 to 4 a.m. right up to the coastline there making landfall along the Yukon Delta coast pushing across Nunavak Island and spreading some moisture down across uh, Kuskokwim Bay, edging its way inland, uh, chance of rain later tonight for Bethel, and then some uh, warm front moisture down across and into the eastern Aleutians there. 
so fog and periods of rain for the Pribilofs, but winds will remain on the light side. Stays nice here, northwest winds, breezes, not a wind, barely a breeze there for Kodiak Island. Uh, so clear skies today will be clear tonight as well. And uh, a lot of low clouds and fog over the Aleutians with uh, breezes 15 to 20 miles an hour, but diminishing there. This high pressure ridge will actually shift a little to the north uh, later tonight and tomorrow. And that'll shut the winds down completely due to that system to the southwest trying to nudge its way a little bit to the north. And tomorrow you can see the ridge right over the Aleutians there. So little gradient and uh, not much more here even to the northern areas. This low center now pushing in uh, over the Yukon Delta. But it uh, doesn't look like much at the surface, but it's got uh, really good upper support in the upper air. It's a much uh, more impressive looking feature there. So the front first one washes out, got some showers coming eastward. Look for periods of rain across both the Yukon Cuscombe Delta tomorrow. So that could be moderate to possibly even briefly heavy uh, at times there. And then thunderstorms developing here along the Alaska Range, up over the north central interior, and some hit and miss action here along the uh, Alaska Range there, the Denali Highway, on over to, uh, say, Paxson. And uh, the eastern interior, though, less clouds and a uh, little warmer air mass shifting westward here as that regional upper low pulls off to the northwest. So looking for temperatures in the lower to mid 80s here over the eastern interior uh, due to that. And uh, hit and miss showers over the northern panhandle, uh, otherwise partly sunny and a little more numerous showers down over the southern areas, but uh, it doesn't look like it'll be a flat out rain condition. And then uh, for Monday, this uh, low center and upper trough slowly sliding southeastward. So that's gonna keep a pretty good chance of uh, rain or showers across that area, especially along the Alaska range here. Even on down, some of that moisture could slip into Kodiak Island, produce a few showers, Kilbrook Mountains, Northward uh, looking kind of uh, cloudy and showery, maybe some breaks here in the afternoon over the Yukon Cuscombe Delta areas, as well as uh, due north there right across the Seward Peninsula into the Noatak Valley. And uh, looks like more showers, a little more widespread now over the eastern interior. Starting out mostly sunny here, but these showers definitely developing, probably coming, becoming more extensive and uh, heavier than they will be tomorrow afternoon. Uh, so thunderstorms, some of those moderate to possibly heavy on the rainfalls. Of course, that's over at, across a brief time in a localized area. And uh, some showers also over the northern southeast coast. Upper level trough sitting here off the coast there. So looks like you have a pretty good chance of showers. Better chance on Monday than you will tomorrow. And possibly a little drier down here with some weak high pressure over the southern southeast coast. But uh, south central Alaska, Kenai Peninsula, Cook Inlet, uh, Looks pretty good, mostly sunny, possible showers. Again, Talkeetna Mountains in the afternoon and uh, over the Copper River Basin areas with uh, some of this moisture streaming up. Uh, probably won't reach the southeast coast until tomorrow or till Monday night late. And then this system here coming out of the Russian Far East, uh, southwesterly flow around this big high that's keeping it uh, fair over the Aleutians, much of the southeast Bering Sea. Lots of low clouds and fog with this system. This one uh, might start to increase the winds over the west central Aleutians, uh, just a chance of that, but a break here. But this system will probably slide on up to the north and look for a downturn in the conditions, uh, probably sometime Monday night and Tuesday as whatever left of this slides on up to the northeast. Temperatures this afternoon across the southeast coast, upper 50s to lower 60s, 64 over at Wrangell. 55 and some rain in Elfin Cove, otherwise uh, 62 at the state capital, Heidelberg 57, Metlakatla 63, up to 69 in Cordova with some uh, sunshine, 72 in McCarthy, same thing at Seward 72, and 72 throughout the Susitna Valley from Wasilla to Squintna, on up to Talkeetna and Chalitna, Tanana Valley upper 60s, 70 at Eagle, and 64 at Fort Yukon. Back to the west, Bettles 61 degrees, mid 50s for the Brooks Range, and uh, coolest here on the western Arctic coast, 35 a point lay, but uh, 54 over at uh, Dead Horse. And then, due to the uh, clouds, southwest breezes, pretty uniform temperatures here in the west, uh, 40s all the way down to Nunavak Island, and 53. They're getting a little warmer at Bethel, 61, Holy Cross, and then at the uh, Cuscombe Valley, 72 at McGrath, 70 degrees at Sleepmute, 
Then you're back down into the 60s, Port Aldsworth at 66, and King Salmon had the same reading. 40s there on uh, both the Port Hyden and Pilot Point, mid 40s over the Pribilofs, rain and fog there. Warmer on the southern side of the peninsula, 51 on Alaska, 47 at Kolsky. Mid 50s here, uh, those west winds creating a few breaks in the uh, overcast there for a little sunshine both at Adak and Atka, 46 and fog actually lifted there at Chimia. And for uh, tomorrow's highs, gosh, bounced by it too fast. Uh, anyway, mid to upper 70s through the, this part of the state to lower to mid 80s over toward the border there, specifically around Eagle and that general area. Otherwise, uh, near 70 again, uh, much like today here over South Central Alaska and about the same over the Panhandle as well. And of course, with the flying weather here, it's going to be a lot cooler out along the coastline. 40s again over the western interior up across the Seward Peninsula. Look for IFR in the eastern Arctic coast and areas of that along the Seward Peninsula. Big area out here over the Bering Sea as well. And again, uh, IFR probably all along the coastline early in the day tomorrow and then that may pull back and burn off back to the west uh, through the late afternoon, but probably hanging along the coastline in most areas as well as along the Bering Sea side of the Alaska Peninsula and uh, IFR to marginal conditions for much of the Aleutians. For passes, Anatovic, uh, possibly marginal VFR at times. Otherwise, uh, pretty good. Most of the showers will be of the VFR variety here, so a risk of a thunderstorm for Adigan. Like Clark and Merrill, VFR, and for Rainy, VFR, Windy, VFR, and Isabel, VFR, uh, kind of going into a chant here. And uh, this uh, pass is interesting. <laughs> Tanita, VFR, Portage, uh, maybe marginal, do some low stuff that might form. Otherwise, I think it'll be VFR from start to finish for the day tomorrow. And freezing levels, again, not much of a gradient here, about six to 8,000 feet across uh, the entire state. A little warmer, upper high pressure over northwest Canada. And again, that's uh, going to kind of build back to the west tomorrow and bring hotter temperatures into the eastern interior. Otherwise, the uh, warmer stuff stays way out to the west and southwest over the Aleutians. Icing threats, again, uh, this shifting eastward today. This will probably come up to the coastline tomorrow. Otherwise, uh, less icing up here to the north of the mixed varieties there, but uh, definitely an increase here over the southwest interior and icing along the southern panhandle. Looking at the wind flow tomorrow, I uh, still have upper level low pressure back in this area. Ridging here, just barely catching the Aleutians uh, with a series of systems coming out of the Russian Far East. Again, one's going to come down, is coming across the Bering Sea today and it'll bring all the rain into the southwest part of the state and that'll take a couple of days to move out once it gets in here and it'll slide to the southeast and weaken and uh, high pressure is kind of dominating the eastern interior at least for tomorrow and probably to a lesser extent on Monday. Southwest winds 25 knots or so here right through the interior into tomorrow as this uh, low settles into the southeast with some ridging right down through here. So another nice day there for Kodiak Island, much of southern Alaska, and uh, still that low uh, off the southeast coast. will pull back up to the north on uh, Monday and keep a kind of uh, showery on the northern end, better conditions down to the south, but otherwise pretty light variable winds tomorrow. Southwest flow uh, picking up to 35 knots from the west out in the Bering Sea here and then back off to the west northwest beyond that. 15 to 20 knots along and mostly north of the Aleutians. Turbulence wise, uh, not much to speak of here. Uh, pretty smooth over the panhandle, much of the interior, and uh, maybe some moderate chop here, possibly coming into the uh, eastern Bering Sea, but really not much significant at all anywhere, even the Aleutians except for way out to the west. And after the break, I'll be back to look at the marine forecasts. Alaska, the great land. Wild. Rugged. And inaccessible.
This remoteness is a great challenge for Forest Service employees who oversee the management of this untamed land. It is the helicopter that is providing access to many remote locations, enabling the Forest Service to accomplish a wide variety of projects that otherwise would be extremely difficult, if not impossible, to perform. Helicopters are used for a variety of jobs. Personnel transportation, movement of cargo and project materials, reconnaissance and wildlife surveys. Aerial seeding and fish transplanting. And fire management. This briefing is an introduction to you, the helicopter user, to provide you with the necessary information to safely plan and participate in Forest Service helicopter operations in Alaska. When your job duties call for helicopter use, you will need to plan your flight carefully and complete a flight request form with the forest dispatcher or the forest helicopter operations specialist. The information on this request will include dates and specific times of day, passengers' names and weights, the type of cargo you're taking, the departure point and your destination, you will also include any special problems or considerations in this report. These might include logistics support, special equipment, hazardous materials, or possibly landing site difficulties. If you're planning a special use mission, such as a sling operation, you will need to involve the helicopter operations specialist early in the planning process. These operations require close supervision, and you will probably also be required to write a specific project plan and hazard analysis for your job. You should also have a plan for alternate projects that can be done if bad weather won't allow you to operate at your original work site. On the day of your flight, make sure that you have all your necessary gear. This will include maps and aerial photos of your work area, and these will help you to select landing and pickup sites. You will also need your work equipment and your own personal survival gear. It's a good idea to pack warm clothing and anything else you might need in case bad weather interferes with your pickup. You will be asked to give weather information by radio before your helicopter returns to pick you up. Remember that Region 10 policy requires a minimum of a 500-foot ceiling and a half-mile visibility. Maximum winds should not exceed 30 miles an hour. Be sure to be at the departure point prior to your scheduled flight time. The helicopter manager will try to schedule your flight as close as possible to your requested time. But remember that other work crews will probably be going out either right before or after you. And if you're late, they're late. The helicopter manager is in charge of all helicopter operations. The manager's job is to assist the pilot and make sure that all passengers conduct themselves safely around the helicopter. Before you fly, the helicopter manager will give you a hands-on safety briefing for the helicopter that you will be flying in. This briefing will include both the location and the operation of safety equipment, your personal protective equipment, and standard procedures that you will follow while working in and around helicopters. In Region 10, all passengers and crew members are required to wear personal protective equipment. These include a highly visible orange Nomex flight suit, Nomex gloves, a flight helmet, and a flotation survival vest. Rubber or leather boots at least eight inches high are also required. 
In your safety briefing, you will learn how to wear and adjust this safety equipment. Your briefing will also include the proper approach and departure routes when moving around a helicopter. You should always approach the helicopter from the front, but only after instruction by the pilot or helicopter manager. There is no reason to feel rushed or to hurry when moving around a helicopter, and you should be careful when carrying your gear to and from the helicopter. Long items should be carried low and parallel to the ground. Loose clothing, such as hats, should be removed before your approach to keep them from being swept into the rotor. Never approach the helicopter from behind or from upslope. This will prevent accidentally walking into the main or tail rotor system. Tail rotors become very difficult to see in certain light situations and travel at speeds that make them virtually invisible. The heat from the engine exhaust jet can result in severe burns. After safely approaching the helicopter, the helicopter manager will assist you to safely store your gear. Become familiar with the operation of the passenger doors and latches and also the handholds and footsteps. Be careful to step over the skids to keep from damaging the pop-out floats. These are used if an emergency water landing is necessary. Also let the helicopter manager know in advance if you are transporting firearms and or hazardous materials. These may have to be transported in special containers or be stowed in a special way. Welcome back. Uh, south winds 15 knots, Lynn Canal, southeast 15 here off the south coast. Uh, that's, a, that's where the strongest winds will be tomorrow. Everywhere else, light and variable. For Monday, uh, southeast here, right along the coast, uh, 15 knots, a little lighter up along the north coast, and generally variable to south winds at about 10 or so over the inside waters, and a little bit more of a breeze there through Lynn Canal. For the uh, Cook Inlet area, southwest at about 10 knots here, all the way down into Kamishak Bay. Call it westerly for Shelikoff Strait. South winds 5 to 10 knots, really light here for the uh, Kodiak Island zones on up along the North Gulf Coast and variable to west winds at 10 for Prince William Sound. Then for uh, Monday, not much change, really light variable to dead calm winds there for Kodiak Island and uh, just a drift from the southeast here across the Barren Islands into Kamishak Bay. No change for Cook Inlet, hanging on to that light southwest uh, drift at about 10. Same thing for Prince William Sound, variable to southwest. All light though, even these winds, more of an easterly direction, but in that five to 10 to maybe 15 knot range for the North Gulf Coast. Moving over to Bristol Bay, southwest 15 tomorrow as that trough uh, swings down from the northwest and kind of across the bay there. Could see some maybe even 20 knot winds briefly tomorrow, but 15 should cover it well. No wind to speak of, just uh, some light westerly breezes here across the peninsula. And then for uh, Monday, that continues uh, west to northwest, 10 to uh, 10 knots here along the peninsula on up into Bristol Bay and northwest at 10 from Cape Sarachef uh, all the way up to Sitkanak. Out in the Aleutians, Couple of really light wind days coming up out here, just west and northwest, five to 10 knots, Adak, Atka, Nikolsky to Unalaska. Uh, real light conditions. Southwest, maybe up to 15 here or less uh, for the western Aleutians and light westerlies there for Amchitka. Then for Monday, kind of swinging around to the east in response to that front that's trying to come to the north, but only going to bring it up to 15 knots here, uh, the way it looks at this point in time. Light winds, Adak and Atka, 10 knots or less, and light variable, no wind for the Fox Islands, uh, with seas pretty slight through Monday. And the southwest coast, basically southwest, 10 to 15 knots, uh, pretty light winds, St. Lawrence Island, light northwesterlies across the northern bearing, and the Pribilofs uh, looking westerly at about 15 tomorrow, then moving on to Monday's outlook, uh, we'll see that comes down to about 10 knots. Uh, so even lighter winds on Monday there. Very light winds here in Nunavak Island on down to Cape uh, Newenham and across coast of Quim Bay. Uh, north of the island though, a little more southwesterly but light, but you could pick up some 20 knot southwest winds here for St. Lawrence Island 
uh, probably by the afternoon hours possibly, and 15 knots back in towards St. Matthew Island in the northern Bering Sea. Up along the Arctic coast uh, tomorrow, to start with anyway, or through most of the day, variable winds uh, dead calm to five knots there in the west, uh, staying light here on the western coast, and then from about the central coast back to the east there, Easterlies at around 10 knots, a little more northeasterly, possibly up to 15 knots there towards uh, uh, Barter Island, Kaktovik to Demarcation Point. And that'll turn more easterly, keep the highest winds, which won't be that high here on the east side, 5 to 10 knots elsewhere. Light variable conditions now shift up under basically a ridge of high pressure. And then southerlies now up to 20 knots, so that's kind of a significant change from uh, tomorrow there across the Chuck CC and uh, Cape Lisburn Point Hope and areas to the west. Looking at tonight again, fair skies here all through the eastern interior. Whatever showers develop will damp out and uh, be over. More showers back to the west, more clouds as well, and hanging on to some lower stuff there on the western Arctic coast. This front pushing rain inland here this evening, uh, possibly to uh, Bethel and areas to the north, Nome and maybe uh, St. Michael. Definitely down into the Pribla, so a rainy, foggy kind of night there. And uh, this warm front will bring some uh, IFR into the eastern Aleutians. Again, IFR will push eastward, possibly as far east as the Cusco Mountains by tomorrow morning, then tend to back off a little in the afternoon, but staying marginal at least as far east as the hills there and also up across Norton Sound. Otherwise, for tomorrow, uh, afternoon scattered thunderstorms and showers developing. Uh, not so much here over the central and eastern Tanana Valley on up across the uh, Yukon, but uh, more so back here to the west. Uh, wet conditions over the Yukon and Cusquam Delta area. Some of that trying to slide into Bristol Bay. And then for uh, Monday, more showers now over the eastern interior, less back to the west. This system weakening and dropping off. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service.